pretty important your trailer be dustproof and waterproof. Maine's got a lot of places to boondock, just tons of them. This is a designated campsite and it's uh, quite enjoyable. It's right in the river. I came in through uh, Reality Road and uh, I went through the uh, six mile check-in, which was a real experience and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but you know, the main thing is there's just beautiful spots to camp up here. When I came in, it was $33 a night. And the gal advised me to get a pass. She said, you know, I said I may stay longer than a week. And she said, uh, get a pass, which is what I did. And I think it's good for other areas around here. But spectacular digs here. Beautiful uh, places to camp. But I've done a lot of trips. Uh, over 280 trip nights in a trailer. I don't know. I'm pushing 300 probably by now. But um, this is the first trip I've come on with absolutely no agenda. Just to come out here and just stay as long as I want at a particular spot. And I've been moving uh, day to day. The weather's been good, so no, uh, no shelters in the back to put up or anything like that. But I've been moving. You know, I, I stay a couple of days at one spot, then I go somewhere else and just uh, check out the, uh, the scenery. So it's, uh, it's a little different than what I'm used to. When you stay in one spot for a couple of days, the solar power suddenly becomes a lot more important because you're not driving to charge things up. And uh, this is all working out pretty good. You know, one of the things I like about my kitchen is... Um, it's a three-person kitchen. You got one person working on this side of it, somebody else at the burners, and somebody else on the right side. So and there's a, there's a sink over here. So that's pretty well laid out. That's a uh, easy access. When I first got my trailer, I insisted that they put the stove and a slide out here. And that didn't work out so well for me because uh, <coughs> when you slide out the stove, it, uh, it, it interferes with everything. It just, you know, <laughs> this just works a lot better, a lot better. So uh, I'm not saying this is right for you. I did see uh, hunters driving around. They uh, have a pickup truck in the back. They have a seat up on the uh, bed. And there's a guy up there with a gun. The other guy drives around looking for something. They're hoping they can snag it on the uh, roadside there, make it easier to move the carcass. But... Uh, I'm just here to take photographs, that's it. This is the last of the peppers. They keep pretty good on the road. But I'm almost at the end of my bag. I've been on this road for a while. I am miles and miles away from the nearest campsite or road. I have a lot of gear with me. I had to take it all out of the car. Uh, this car holds a lot of stuff, this uh, Subaru Outback, which I'm happy about. The car was pretty full when I left. Uh, but uh, what happened is uh, I have a slow leak in one of my tires. It's down to 22 pounds. The other tires are up to 37 pounds. So uh, I'm going to attempt to fix this here. I have a plug kit and I have a pump. So uh, let's see how I do. I'm using a... Uh, my hand spray bottle and I can see it. It doesn't appear that there's anything in there but I'm going to try and auger it out. I'm going to use one of these uh, flat patch kits. Tubeless repair kit. I've done this plenty of times before. I hope I have good luck here because I don't want to end the trip so quick. Uh, with the leak the way it is I could get out of here but uh, I would prefer to continue. Pump. Uh, the air pump did its job, but uh, all these things get pretty hot. They are uh, too hot to touch, so uh, you definitely got to let it cool down. I've done a number of these tires. I've never had one that was this hard to get the plug into. It's really tight, but uh, let's see how we're doing here. I don't see or hear any leaking. So I'm happy about that. I may well check the rest of the tire too while I'm here. 
The last step is to cut off the plug with this razor knife, and uh, I did that. I don't want to cut too close though, and I checked it again. It's not leaking, so I'll just get an air uh, pressure gauge and check and make sure I'm really up to uh, what it should be. But it uh, looks like the trip has been salvaged. Uh, I recommend you bring two of these kits, uh, and I just bought some cheap ones at uh, Harbor Freight. I recommend you bring two or three of them. Uh, you can go through them pretty quick on the road here. Uh, it was really tough getting the plug in here, and uh, I cracked the handle, which is not good. I have a second uh, kit here, but uh, you know they're not built that great. <laughs> I may get a professional kit, whatever that means. But uh, hey, I've I'm been back exploring in for almost two weeks now. <laughs> I tell you. I went down more dead ends and uh, roads to nowhere than I care to <laughs> remember. But I found some really great spots too, really great. From where I left this morning to where I'm heading to now is 40 miles of Woods Road. I don't mind, I kind of like it all, but the roads are of varying quality. Some roads I get down, they turn into, they just turn into a dead end. <laughs> And uh, I have to uh, have a tight turnaround, which is a problem when you have a trailer. But so far I've managed to navigate okay. I'm getting real good at backing up with this trailer. Real good. I've had to back up like a half a mile. Because <laughs> there was nowhere to turn around. I reinforced my springs a little bit before I... Uh, in a spring, I put in these uh, spring helpers. They're like rubber bumpers you put in the springs. And uh, it helps uh, prevent bottoming out uh, a little bit. And uh, while I don't think that there are any replacement for heavy duty shocks and springs, I think they're real easy to do. And I tell you, being up here on these rough roads, uh, some of these roads are pretty bad. A lot of bounce and uh, I'd say that those uh, spring helpers are helping quite a bit I have a video on that I'll put a link on top to it didn't cost much and it was easy to do now that's not a replacement for an off-road vehicle but uh, the Subaru is a passenger vehicle that you can use off-road soft-roading but it's not a uh, off-road vehicle let me be clear about that it's good for soft roading like this you got to be careful and you got to take it slow along with the lovely forest you get this uh, logging here GPS's I've got. Hopefully I won't get lost. Pressure on the patch tire, that'd be the right rear, is uh, doing pretty good, no problems. So it's going to have that uh, plug kit along. Uh, I recommend bringing like three or four plug kits. Uh, the, the glue tends to dry out on some of them, especially if you've opened any. So uh, a word to the wise, it saved the day on this trip.
The tripod lets me get low, but I did better just putting the camera on the rock so the waves were higher than the camera lens. They're talking about rain all day today and all day tomorrow, so I'm thinking uh, the uh, clam shelter, it's a good time to deploy that. The ground is very uneven here, but the clam shelter goes up okay. The wind's coming from this direction off the lake. So I put up the, uh, the wind walls on this side and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll knock out some of the rain from getting the screens wet. We'll see, I kind of like the view, so I don't want to put up all the, uh, the, the, the screen walls. I just want to put up the minimum necessary to keep me comfortable in here. Set up for some interior uh, fun here. I'm getting some uh, rain exposure here. I'm going to put up that rain wall. One of the nice things about the uh, countertop stove is that when you're done with it, you can close it and get more counter space, which is uh, always welcome. In order to be flexible with my energy, um, I uh, am running the, uh, the refrigerator off the trailer battery 99% of the time, but it's been real cloudy uh, since yesterday afternoon cloudy all day today. It's raining. It's foggy out. I don't know if you can see that fog across the lake. It's uh, very foggy. So a bad day for solar. And uh, it's been charging the trailer battery, but not adequately. It's only up to 12.6 volts right now. I thought I'd use my uh, Jackery 500 to power the refrigerator. Uh, that'll, that'll give the uh, trailer battery time to fully charge. You have to be able to flex. There's uh, plenty of things you can do to uh, stretch out your power quite a ways. I've been here for a couple of days and I kind of like it here. <laughs> I'm not in a hurry to leave. You know what's going to decide whether I leave? If I, uh, if I want to stick around long enough to eat the cans of sardines I've been carrying around for years as emergency food. <laughs> I've, I've eaten most of the fresh food so far and uh, I'm getting down into some uh, slimmer pickings now and uh, I'm determined to stay here as long as I can stand the food. <laughs> Every once in a while, question what you're doing.
it's not at all easy to get to these places. But when you're here, it's really fantastic. got this beautiful mountain lake up here. This is a uh, natural lake created by a glacier 12,000 years ago when the glacier receded out of this area. There's all this talus. Squirrels chirping here. Uh, there's all this talus which is uh, small boulders that uh, you know come down like a slide into this uh, lake and uh, that was deposited here a long time ago. So there's a lot of history. There's uh, uh, some very interesting fish up here. There's, um, there's landlocked salmon, I think there's an arctic, there's a char here too, I think. There's some really unusual fish. I have a list of it. I was reading it last night. I just can't remember any of it. I'm using wool undershirt up here. Uh, you know, this is how you dress up in Maine, you know? Wool pants, wool shirt. This is what uh, that L.L. Bean look. Well, that's what, that's what you wear here. Uh, wool is good stuff. I have wool long johns on, wool socks. Uh, the hat's synthetic, but uh, I didn't have an orange wool hat. <laughs> you gotta, this is, you don't have an orange hat up here. You're fair game, okay? So, uh, but the, the hunters have all been very good here, very sane. I hardly hear any shooting at all up here. Um, it's moose season and uh, deer season, and I think we might even be in bear season. I don't know. All the things I come here to see, people are shooting. So I have to charge camera battery right here. And uh, this camera battery, right, I plug it into my Jackery 300. I'm charging a uh, MP3 player. I like a lot of music. I've got a, uh, an MP3, uh, you know, boom, uh, Bluetooth. Yeah, there's nobody around here to disturb, just the squirrels, and uh, they don't mind too much. Uh, we get along pretty good, me and the squirrels. So the Jackery is charging, and the net input to the Jackery exceeds the amount of consumption I'm doing here. So the Jackery itself is maintaining 100% charge and uh, while I charge all this other stuff. That way at night I can use all the electricity I want and I'm pretty much set. I want to make an early break tomorrow, so I'm uh, having a light dinner tonight, and I'm packing everything up. Uh, there's talk of rain in the morning. I have I'm getting weather forecasts on a uh, a Garmin Inreach um, satellite communicator. Uh, this Garmin uh, Inreach Mini, uh, it's really good. I find myself whenever I go for a hike now, I'm hiking alone out here. I take it with me. It does give you some peace of mind, and uh, highly recommended. We're definitely past peak leaf season now, and I'm uh, thinking of leaving the area. Uh, a lot of leaves are down, as a matter of fact. I've got to go out the same way I came in. Uh, did a six mile Continue checkpoint. On route. But I've got to, uh, my mountain bike is stashed in the woods back there. Uh, one of the best dining experiences in Maine is these uh, small roadside seafood shacks. They're great. And here's the, uh, the food. These are uh, broiled scallops with tartar sauce and fried clams with tartar sauce. Yeah, that's another good spot. This is in Millinocket, Maine. Right on the beach. Fabulous. That is a short stay for me. I'll just be here overnight. I'm uh, on the move.